Okay. Sorry that it's taken so long today. I had to go to the school to pick up people's packets, like, if they turn them in. Anyway, this is your assignment today. Today is Thursday, thank goodness, and it is the 16th. Um, you had to read these pages, and there were some activities on these that you were supposed to do. So this is what I'm going to start doing, considering that some, you all who have been watching these videos, hopefully, hopefully I'm not, like, misjudging that, but you've been doing what you're supposed to be doing, and I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, and if you're watching these videos, credit to you, I'm just going to start working it all out. Yes, you have to watch the video, like, don't be that person, I will judge you, Okay. But don't be that person. Anyway, so 546. This should be like an extension of what you did yesterday. So 5,000 pages later. Oh, that's really good. They should be assigning you this. You're lucky. 546. And that's all. Yay! This is my favorite thing. Okay, what is adaptation? So you're supposed to be doing all the stuff that it tells you to do. And we're just going to... Oh, sorry. Oh, I hate that this doesn't zoom. Okay, hold on. There we go. So basically, an adaptation is something that helps helps you survive. Okay? That's what adaptations are for. So it's something that helps you survive. And here's the reading. It says, in all species that reproduce sexually, offspring are different from each other. You need to associate this word different with the word diverse, okay? If it's diverse, it's good. It's a good thing. The giraffes in figure one are members of the same species, yet each one has a slightly different pattern of spots on its coat. Slight differences in inherited traits among individual members of a species are variations. Okay, definition. Variations occur through mutations. A mutation might harm an organism's chances of survival. However, many mutations, such as those that cause the unique pattern of spots on a giraffe, cause no harm. Still, other mutations can benefit an organism. They produce traits that help an organism survive in its environment. So there's three things that happen for a mutation. It can harm, it can do nothing, cause no harm, or it can benefit. So those are the three things. Um, anything in mutations like Hulk, that's what I think of, at least. So short-term changes to an, to an organism's environment can include changes in light, temperature, moisture, nutrients, and social factors. Okay, I'm going to underline that because it lists things and usually lists things are important. Okay, long-term changes can be sudden such as volcanic eruptions that block sunlight. Okay, so long-term term LT long term so we're talking about volcanoes or what was it plate tectonics so I'm just gonna put PT for plate tectonics the giraffes in figure one have different spot patterns but each has spots these spots help the giraffe blend in with their environment the grasslands of Africa as a result predators of giraffes such as lions and hyenas cannot see them easily the spotted coat of giraffes is an adaptation and this is our word. An adaptation is an inherited trait that helps a species survive in its environment. Cool. From Latin, adapter, which means to adjust. Okay, so it says, fill in the diagram to explain how mutations cause variation. Then explain how the giraffes, or how the variations in a giraffe fur pattern, in giraffe fur patterns, God, I can't read. How did I make it this far in life? can serve as an adaptation. So mutations are like, how do I, how do we want to say this? We're going to say it's like an error in genetic code. That's what I think of a mutation as. Kind of making me think that I should go back and find the definition of mutation because I know it's here. A permanent change in a sequence of DNA. It is an error in the DNA's arrangement of a gene. Okay, error in genetic code. Good enough. Which cause variations. Variations which are, and they tell you, differences in traits. So good. Differences in traits. Cool. Then explain how the variations in giraffe fur pot. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't. Fur patterns can serve as an adaptation. Okay. Explain how variations. Okay. Mm. Isn't the whole point of them having spots like camouflage? So explain how variations adaptations. So the fur pattern, fur pattern can help giraffes. I hate writing in textbooks. I have to do this weird angle. Giraffes. How does one spell camouflage? Camouflage? Yeah, that looks right. Can help camouflage in their environment. So I think it's clear to say that if a giraffe has more spots, it's probably easier to get lost in the background considering something that's like a solid pattern. So we're just going to say that we elaborated on that part. Okay, so boom, this is done. Mm -hmm. How adaptations occur? No. Okay, there we go. Um, giraffe spots were probably the result of a mutation that occurred in one giraffe many generations ago. The variation, this is the most important part, the whole point of this is to help you survive. So it says the variation helped that giraffe survive, and eventually the mutated gene became part of the giraffe genotype. Genotype is genetic code, okay? So how did this happen? How can a variation in an individual become natural or become common to a population? This is kind of what I like wrote down yesterday on one of your assignments. Okay, natural selection. This is the big one. Um, Charles Darwin. This is the name you need to associate with this guy. Okay, um, natural selection is the process by which organisms with variations that help them survive in their environment live longer. So live longer compete better and reproduce more than those who do not have the variation. So that's a pretty big thing. Boom. If a variation helps an organism survive or compete better in its environment, so this would be like the spots on a giraffe, the organism with the variation lives longer. Yeah. Man, I really wish y'all could watch this brain pop. It's a really good brain pop. Anyway, so it says the organism that l that the variation lives lives longer, blah, 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 blah. Okay, because it lives longer, it has more offspring. This is the whole point. Okay, you have this trait. You survive because of it. And because you're surviving, you're reproducing and you're having babies with this same gene, right? With this same trait. So over time, organisms without that trait will die off. And organisms with the trait will keep surviving. And this is how, like, eventually all the giraffes have spots because the spots help them to survive. Animals, so giraffes without the spots probably died earlier and weren't able to have as many babies. Done. So it says, over many generations, more offspring inherit the variation. Eventually, most of the population has the variation and it becomes an adaptation as shown in figure two. Blah, 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 blah. Because mutations are random and occur continually, so do new variations. The variations that become adaptations depend on the environment. Okay, that's important. Depending on where you're at, obviously, certain traits can come out that help you survive. Okay? Recall that over time, all environments change. Short-term changes can include changes in light, temperature, moisture. Okay, hold on. Short-term changes can include changes. Short-term changes can include changes in light, temperature, moisture, nutrients, and social factors. Long-term changes can be sudden or gradual. When an environment changes, when an environment changes, a population either adapts through natural selection or dies off. The repeated elimination of populations can lead to the extinction of a species. Okay. So I'm gonna explain this pretty much. I think this is what they're saying. All right, never mind. I'll just read it, I guess. So it says variation in traits. So there's two types of beetles on this tree. There is a brown beetle and a yellow beetle. But if you were like a bird or something, which one do you think would be easier to see? It would obviously be easier to spot a yellow beetle versus, versus the brown beetle because the brown beetle is doing some little camouflage action over there, right? 
So you, as the bird, go and you start pecking off, pecking off. God help me. I'm sorry. All right. Start eating the yellow beetles on the tree because they're easier to spot, right? So you do this continually. And over time, should there be as many yellow beetles? No. Why? Because you've been killing them off. But in this time that you were killing off all these little yellow beetles, what's been happening? These brown beetles have been reproducing. And because they've been reproducing, there's now more brown beetles. And over time, what's going to happen is that yellow beetle may not even be there anymore. There might just be brown beetles in this environment. Done. Hey. I think this is something, yep. This is something we have to do. 548. Variations help organisms survive. I'm just going to put survive because that sounded good. Variations help you survive. There were like three things that, what is it? Oh yeah. Here we go. Um, live longer, compete better, and reproduce. Which allows them to, oh man. Live longer. I'm pretty sure this is it. Live longer, compete better. This is like natural selection. Compete better, which allows them to reproduce more. Oh, my handwriting's still ugly. Um, connect it. A uh, disease affected the leaves on much of the low vegetation on an island. Okay, I'm imagining an island. Some weird tree over here, and there's like, okay, got it. You're not judging the, don't judge. Okay. Um, explain how this environmental change might affect traits in subsequent populations of tortoises on the island. Hmm. Okay. Obviously, turtles can't climb trees, right? This is what we're thinking over here. Turtles can't climb trees. Okay. So there's a disease and much, okay, I got it, and much of the what they used to eat in their diet is now unavailable because it's dead and obviously turtles aren't going to be eating something that's dying or diseased, okay? So what would a turtle have to do to survive? A turtle still needs to eat, right? So it still needs to eat, still needs to eat. And because it still needs to eat, it's going to have to learn to eat other things, so... We are going to put, what is it, tortoises. The tortoises, tortoise, how do you spell this? Tortoises still need to, how do we say, to eat. The tortoises still need to eat now because... They are unable to eat leaves, that's what it says it is, to eat the low leaves because they're lower to the ground. Low leaves, they will have to consume other vegetation okay I actually have a lot more to say but I know I'm not I know there's just no way I'm gonna have room to do this okay so um, how this might affect traits in subsequent populations of tortoises on an island okay there's a bunch of answers to this there really is no wrong answer lies there's always a wrong answer but if you can explain your answer well enough I guess it can't be wrong okay so what I'm thinking is they can't eat the leaves, so they eat something else, right? So they change their diet. So, like, let's say a turtle. How do, do tortoises have teeth? I don't think they have teeth. Okay, maybe they get, like, a really strong, like, jaw, okay, because their diet changes, and the turtle with the really strong jaw was able to consume other vegetation, okay, that a regular turtle without that jaw wouldn't be able to. So because that turtle with the strong, manly jaw, okay, because it can keep eating, it survives, and it lives longer, and it reproduces. And more of that trait, okay, with the strong jaw, okay, gets passed on to its babies. 
and this keeps happening. So what would happen is tortoises without that jaw or the strength in their mouth, I really don't know what it's called, mouth features, whatever, okay? Because they are unable to maintain a diet, they die off. So at the end of the day, we're just gonna put natural selection. That sucks, poor little turtles. Mm, I agree. Um, okay, next one. Selective breeding. Okay, selective breeding is when you're breeding something because it has favorable traits. So this is really sad, okay? Ignore this chicken, although I'm really interested in breeding it. Um, selective breeding is something they do at racehorses, okay? You want a really strong horse, and if you know that this one is really strong and this one's really strong, then you breed them together and with the expectation that their, their offspring will be strong. You need to think of it like um, selective breeding. Let me think. Mm, what else? Oh, yeah, chicken. I know. I feel really bad because I'm going to talk about, yeah. Anyway, when you buy chicken from the store, okay, and the chicken breasts are like, they're huge. Like, pieces of chicken are huge now. Chickens are not normally that big, okay? So what happens is they breed the chickens, okay? And be, when they have, like, so much meat on them, they allow them to keep breeding. And so the chickens have more meat on them for you to eat. Like, this is something they do all the time. Oh, it's so sad. Continuing on. Okay, let me read this. The Frizzle Chicken. Y'all, I just thought of, what's that show with the bus? Oh, yeah, Magic School Bus. The Frizzle Chicken is the result of breeding birds with a mutation, outward curling feathers. It looks flustered. Okay, selective breeding. Watching natural selection in action is like watching mountains grow taller. It occurs, so this is important, it takes forever. I almost cursed. That was close. It takes forever for this to happen, okay? It's easier to observe a type of selection practiced by humans. When humans breed organisms for food or for use as pets, they are, use, or they are selecting variations that occur naturally in populations. The selection and breeding of organisms with desired traits is selective breeding. So we're going to highlight that definition. Selective breeding is similar to natural selection, except humans, instead of nature, do the selecting. By breeding organisms with desired traits, humans change traits just as natural selection does. Cows with increased levels of milk production, dogs of different sizes, and roses of unique colors are products of selective breeding. Um, the chicken shown in figure three, frizzle chicken, is also a product of selective breeding, breeding, breeding. Types of adaptations. Okay, um, if you're in pre-AP, this is important. This is basically what you have to semi-describe in your project. FYI. Um, through natural selection or selective breeding, all species on Earth are uniquely adapted to their environments. Chickens are adapted to life in a hen house, just as giraffes are adapted to life in the grasslands. Adaptations enable species to maintain homeostasis. Homeostasis is about balance, okay? Avoid predators and find and eat food and move. Okay, this is important. Um, there are three main categories of adaptation, structural, behavioral, and functional. Structural is like what it looks like, okay? Behavioral, behavioral, oh lord. Behavioral is something that it does, okay? Functional, hmm, a biochemical change. Hmm, interesting. I think that in your project it wasn't described as functional. But anyway, it's there. Good enough. Oh, how many pages do we have on this thing? 551. Okay, we're almost there. Maintaining homeostasis, the ability of an organism to keep its internal conditions within certain limits is homeostasis. Homeostasis is about balance. Like, your body always stays at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Anytime that there's something, like you're sick and you run a fever, it's because your body's trying to maintain homeostasis. It's like you're hot, you're running outside, you sweat, your body cools down through the sweat, okay? Oh, look, it says it right there. Sweating on a hot day is an adaptation that helps you maintain your internal body temperature when external temperatures increase. All species have adaptations that help them survive temporary, that's important, temporary changes in their environments. Species also have adaptations specific to their environments. 
Plants living in desert store more water in their leaves. Cacti, they have like accordion roots, which store a lot of water. Fish in the ocean have gills that remove oxygen from the water. Okay. Mm, can you see the crab? So, camouflage is an adaptation. Although, continuing on, whatever. Mm. Protection from predators. Species also have adaptations that protect them from predators. For example, sharp quill... Oh, I cannot read. Sharp quills protect porcupines. Okay. Sometimes through natural selection, variations are selected that make an organism resemble something else. Camouflage. Okay. Camouflage is when you blend in. Like, you know, like the print camouflage with the army people wear. Okay. So, basically, this crab is camouflaging. Mimicry is when, like, you need to think of the word mimic. Like, if you're mimicking me, like, you're copying someone else. Like, that's what it means to mimic. So, um, mimicry, there's, like, snakes that look like more poisonous snakes, but they're not. Okay. Um, there are butterflies. There's viceroy. I think that's what it's called. There's a butterfly that's poisonous when you eat it. Obviously, you're not eating it. Imagine yourself as an organism, like an animal, okay? And so there's another type of butterfly that copies the exact same pattern as the poisonous butterfly. And as a result, other animals think that it's poisonous when it's not, and so it survives longer, okay? So the Scarlet King snake is a non-venomous snake that looks like or mimics a venomous snake. Sorry, I got it high like that. Um, predators often avoid the king snake because they can't tell these two snakes apart. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's called a viceroy butterfly. Mm, movement. Cheetahs and gazelles have long, powerful legs adapted to running fast. Legs, wings, flippers, fins, and even tails are adaptations that help species move. Movement helps species search for food, avoid predators, and escape unpleasant stimuli. Even plants have adaptations for movement. Their leaves turn to face the sun as it moves across the sky. Sunflower? What is that called? Phototropism? Continuing on. Okay, assess how structural adaptation helps an animal both to avoid predators and to find food. Okay. If you were a sea cucumber crab, is it this? Is this what a sea cucumber? Yeah, this is it. Okay. So, if you were camouflaged, how would that help you avoid predators? Well, simply, you can't be seen. So, you can't be seen. I think that's kind of a given. Gosh, this is what happens when I don't practice. Um, find food. So, if you were camouflaged, you would be able to sneak up on other organisms and potentially kill them, right? Because you would blend into the background. That makes sense. Oh. Okay. Okay. Though all birds have wings, beaks, and feathers, each species is adapted to a different environment. Each uses its beak in a different way to gather food. This is a big thing about Charles Darwin, and technically you all should have gone over this in 7th grade. Yeah, don't tell me your sob story about 7th grade, okay? I already know. It says, parrots have strong beaks that help them crack nuts and seeds. Yes, condors, are vultures? Yeah, have long, powerful, I cannot read, powerful beaks to tear the flesh from dead animals. Got it. Uh, you need to make that. I'm not letting you out that easy. Okay, food gathering. Camouflage and mimicry also help, also can help species find food. The camouflaged sea cucumber crab in figure four is hidden not only from predators, but also from its prey. Many other kinds of adaptations help species gather and eat food. An anteater has a long nose, it's like a weird elephant, and a long tongue for gathering ants. Each of the birds shown in figure five has a beak that helps it gather a different type of food. Some plants also have adaptations that enable them to store food. Potatoes, onions, and tulips all have modified underground stems that store food for the plant. As predators develop adaptations for hunting their prey, the species they hunt develop adaptations for avoiding them. A cheetah is a fast runner, but so are the gazelles it chases. Over time, cheetahs might become even faster due to chance variations in natural selection. 
faster gazelles also might arise from the same process. In this way, species adapt to each other. That was so good. Okay, I'm pretty sure... I don't think we have to do this. 552. Oh my gosh, y'all. Are we done? Yeah, okay. You don't have to do that. I thought you did. You should do that. Um, summarize it. An animal species is moved to the Arctic. Arctic. What adaptations would be helpful in this new environment? Draw and label each adaptation on an animal you choose. Oh my gosh. I don't even want to do this. You need to do this. Let me think. An animal species is moved to the Arctic. What adaptations would be helpful in the new... So you're supposed to pick an animal to do this? Let me think. Hmm. Mm. What animal species though? What's something that could live in a really cold place? I don't know. Uh, question mark. I will therefore leave you to think of this because you have time. You have the power of Google. Not that you should copy everything, but just find an animal species that you think and explain why those, why they will be able to survive. I'll help you out with this. Differentiate among mutation, variation, and adaptation and explain how they're related to each other. Y'all, that is like the tiniest amount of space. I don't think... That is not going to fit. Okay, mutation. I'm just going to write this. A mutation is an error. A variation... Is something that differs in an organism different in organism an adaptation they're all related to each other is something that so we're gonna say variation that helps with survive that helps with survival Okay, which sequence, which is the sequence, sequence by which natural selection occurs? Hmm, that's a good question. Okay, natural selection works. So, you have to start off with the variation. See, I wouldn't even have done it like this. I would have said that, no natural selection okay i'm gonna say there's definitely not a and b selection works something with a mutation first it has something different so i'm gonna start off with variation the question is after variation is it is that considered the selection or is that the adaptation no you can have a variation that doesn't mean you'll survive so it's definitely got to be adaptation c okay you have something that's different about you you can use that difference to survive or die. If you use it to survive, you've officially adapted. Over time, that trait will be passed on. That's the selection. Done. Select two species that live near you and list three ways, one structural, one behavioral, and one functional, that each one is adapted. Oh my gosh, do they see how little room you have to write? Like, that's difficult to write all of this in this tiny space. Select two species that live near you. Um, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna write down the species, <laughs> and you can explain them, okay, because they're not hard, but I'll pick them. Um, cactus is one, what's something that lives near you? Mm. I'm gonna put duck. I kind of want to go to the duck pond, but I can't. Okay. Higher order thinking questions. These are supposed to be a little bit more difficult. Evaluate the role of short-term and long-term changes to the environment in natural selection. Okay, I'm just going to say a bunch of stuff, and you can pick and choose 
what I am giving you as essentially to help you understand this answer, okay? The role of short-term and long-term changes to the environment in natural selection. So these two things kind of influence each other. A short-term change can cause an organism to have some sort of variation come out, okay? And if that variation helps that organism to survive, then that change is no longer a short-term change. It's a long-term change for that organism, not necessarily for the environment, okay? So a short-term change, long-term changes, okay? Basically, if it's a short-term change, the organism has to adapt super quick. If it's not adapting, it's dying. A long-term change, there's more time for an organism, an organism to survive because there's more time. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. That sounded right. Assess. What might happen to a species of ground plants over many generations when leaf-eating tortoises move into its range? Okay, obviously tortoises cannot climb trees. We've already said this. So, if you're a plant and you're trying to survive and tortoises are trying to eat you, what might you do as a plant? You might grow vines to help you climb up a tree. That way you could escape that. Okay, if you didn't adapt, you would die as a plant. So that wouldn't work out. And you don't have to do the writing in science. And I'm going to say I have officially helped you a lot considering you could have been doing this all by your little lonesome. So... I'll post tomorrow's assignment, obviously tomorrow, but uh, keep working. If you're in pre-AP, you need to make sure that you're doing your project, okay? And I hope that you finish this really quick because you should have been doing it all by yourself, okay? Bye, have a good day.